let's see the preparation of uh, ethers in this video. Yes, uh, before going to the preparation of ethers, let's, so, let's see uh, what are eth ethers. See, by definition, ether is an organic compound that contains two alkyl group linked uh, by means of an oxygen atom, right? Uh, yeah, this uh, the oxygen atom and two methyl groups attached to it, hence it's an ether. Otherwise, we can also define these ethers as if H is being substituted from, from a hydrocarbon, that is an alkene here, by an alkoxy group or a rhyloxy group, then it is nothing but an ether. See, OR is an alkoxy group and OAR is an aryloxy group. So, so we can define ethers as an organic compound that is having an alkyl group linked to oxygen atom or if H of its hydrocarbon al alkane is being substituted by alkoxy or aryloxy group that is an ether. Right, uh, we have few examples of ether here and uh, this is generally the ethers are represented as R O R dash. And uh, if the two methyl groups attached to an oxygen atom, this dimethyl ether, diethyl ether, and this ethyl methyl ether. Yes, they can be symmetrical or unsymmetrical. There are two methods of preparation of uh, ethers here by dehydration of alcohols and Williamson synthesis of ether. Yeah. By dehydration of alcohols here results in the formation of an either alkene or ether depending upon the temperature conditions here. It can result in the formation of an alkene as you can see or an ether. So if you maintain the temperature then the synthesis of ether is possible, right? If this uh, alcohols are dehydrated in the presence of sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid that means which are able to give H plus those are what are called as protic acids so those are able to give H plus are the protic acids and if this alcohols are dehydrated in the presence of protic acids at 443 Kelvin that is a little higher temperature then we'll get an alkene if the same reaction with the same reagent is carried out at 413 Kelvin then we'll get an ether so here, the mechanisms followed are different. This is an elimination which is occurring, resulting in the formation of an alkane. And this is what, this is an SN2, substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction, which is happening here. Right, maintaining the temperature conditions, now we can synthesize ether. And what is the mechanism which is followed, how this is done? Let's see here. The mechanism, as I said, is an SN2 here and how this is done. So the first step is a protonation of this alcohol resulting in the formation of what? Protonated alcohol, right? Right, this is uh, what is followed. And the second step, this unprotonated alcohol, that's one of the molecules of this ethyl alcohol. Now we are uh, interested in the synthesis of diethyl ether here. So we are taking ethanol here, so that is ethyl alcohol, diethyl ether. So we want C2H5 groups on either side of this oxygen. So we are getting uh, taking it is to be C2H5OH. So this unprotonated alcohol, uh, the, nu uh, the nucleophilic attack of this unprotonated alcohol on the protonated alcohol. This is how it is taking place. See? So uh, this water molecule is lost, lost, resulting in the formation of an oxonium ion. Right, this is what oxonium ion. In the third step, this proton is lost here, resulting in the formation of what the desired product, diethyl ether. Right. Now this uh, method has its own uh, uh, advantages and I mean disadvantages. The first thing is here, it can be used for the preparation of only primary alcohols. That means that uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, that this method is suitable for the preparation of the ethers, which are having only the primary alkyl groups, right? So uh, it is, I mean, yeah. Just a second. So it is, uh, I mean, this method is uh, suitable for the preparation of what only for the ethers which are containing the primary groups, right? Uh, so the, then we'll use primary alcohols. For example, we have taken uh, this one C2H5OH. So we are getting what? C2H5O, C2H5, done. But if we are taking this secondary or tertiary alcohols, what is happening here? Tertiary or 
secondary alcohols. See, what is happening? This mechanism which is followed is, uh, I said is SN2. If secondary or tertiary alcohols are taken, for example, I'm taking this, so elimination uh, reaction will occur. So elimination will predominate over substitution. There's a competition here for the substitution reaction and also for the elimination. But here, if we're taking secondary or tertiary alcohols, what is happening? Elimination will predominate over substitution, resulting in the formation of alkene here. This is what is happening, right? Resulting in the formation of what? Alkene. So, now this method is suitable only, I mean, is, uh, is uh, suitable for the preparation of only what the prime, I mean, the uh, uh, ethers containing only primary alcohol, uh, primary groups, right? And it's not suitable for the preparation of ethers containing secondary or tertiary groups, right? Done. This is one. And one more thing is symmetrical uh, ethers can also only be prepared by this method. So unsymmetrical uh, ethers cannot be prepared by this method, right? Only symmetrical ethers. So uh, the ethers which are containing only primary alkyl groups and only symmetrical ethers can be prepared by this method, right? So there are only primary groups and symmetrical ethers can be unsymmetrical ethers cannot be prepared uh, by this method because uh, in the second step uh, so uh, we'll get a mixture of ethers here right we'll get a mixture of ethers for example uh, if we want this kind of ether so what should we take the starting product here c2h5oh and ch3oh so the attack can happen and a mixture of ethers can uh, be obtained so uh, uh, in addition to this, we can uh, get this product, this product, or this product. So mixture of ethers are being obtained. So this method is not suitable for the preparation of unsymmetrical ethers. Only symmetrical ethers and the ethers containing only primary groups can be prepared. But there is uh, one more uh, reaction that is um, uh, Williamson synthesis of ether by which we can uh, prepare both uh, symmetrical and unsymmetrical uh, ethers and also we can prepare uh, the ethers containing tertiary and secondary groups. How we can see, how we'll see here. This is actually the Williamson synthesis of ether. What are the starting products we are taking? This is an alkyl halide. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. What are we taking here? This is an alkyl halide. The reaction of an alkyl halide with sodium alkoxide or uh, we can take sodium phenoxide also. For example, first we are uh, taking alkyl halide and sodium alkoxide resulting in the formation of an ether here, right? And sodium halide is being formed. So for example, if we're taking CH3I and CH3CH2O, Na, what is this sodium methoxide and methyl iodide? So this is what alkyl halide and this is what sodium alkoxide, which I'm taking to be sodium ethoxide. So what is happening here? So this is uh, what is the product which is formed. CH3O, CH2, CH3, NAI, right? So this uh, this is how the reaction is occur uh, and sodium iodide is being formed, right? Yeah, <laughs> let me take an example and explain this to you, right? If I, uh, so what is the mechanism which is followed here again is sent to, right? So, I'm taking here tertiary, um, this is uh, sodium alkoxide, so tertiary uh, butoxide I'm taking here, sodium butoxide, right? It's a tertiary, right? This one is uh, primary alkyl halide. This is primary alkyl halide, and this is tertiary, right? Alkyl halide, and this is, um, um, yes, tertiary sodium butoxide, right? So how this reaction is occurring, this uh, alkoxide ion, this will attack here. Uh, so Cl is lost, resulting in the formation of what? This one ether, which is a tertiary butyl methyl ether, right? So there are two groups here, which is tertiary butyl group and methyl group on the oxygen atom. So there are two different groups. One is primary, right? One is tertiary group here. So we can introduce either primary group or secondary or tertiary group, depending upon the reagents we are selecting here, right? 
and sodium chloride done. So I said symmetrical and unsymmetrical ethers can be prepared by this method. So there's an unsymmetrical ether. Symmetrical can also be prepared. That is very easy. Take this CH3ON and CH3Cl. So that will get no problem. But the advantage over the first method is unsymmetrical ethers can also be prepared. And I said not only, I mean, the ethers with not only the primary groups, but secondary and tertiary groups with desired positions we can prepare. Right. What we are taking is the primary alkyl halide and the sodium alkoxide we are taking to be tertiary. Right. So, uh, one question arises here. If I am taking tertiary alkyl halide and this one is primary, that is uh, uh, sodium methoxide I am taking. So, this is what sodium methoxide. So, we expect the reaction to be the same. Right, we'll get uh, the same uh, groups like alkyl, I mean, methyl and tertiary butyl attached to oxygen, but this is not the reaction occurring. What are we getting here? This an alkene is being formed here, right, resulting in the formation of an alkene, methyl alcohol, and sodium chloride. There is no traces of ether at all. So, for the, uh, what is happening here actually? See, why this alkene is being formed? Yes, this sodium methoxide I'm taking here, this not only acts as a nucleophile here. So what it is acting as, it is also acts as a base. It's not only a nucleophile, but also a good base. So if I'm taking this to be tertiary and this to be primary, so this one now acts as a nucleophile acting as what this is acting as a nucleophile and this since there is no steric hindrance on this methyl chloride it would directly attack on this carbon atom kick off this chlorine happily sit there resulting in the formation of ether but if i'm taking the sodium methoxide and tertiary butyl chloride and what will happen here this one instead of acting as a nucleophile i said it's also a good base so rather than attacking on this uh, because there are three tertiary but i mean alkyl uh, three alkyl groups with three hydrogens on each of these carbon atoms so it's difficult for this to go uh, through this space and attack on this carbon atom so it will choose a easier way what will we do it will act as a base uh, abstract this proton from here easy right what's the function of the base abstract a proton from this beta carbon alpha beta carbon so leading to what elimination reaction leading to elimination reaction minus hcl i mean uh, minus uh, i mean the cl is kicked off right uh, this h is lost resulting in the formation of what this alkene here Right, so it doesn't want to act as a nucleophile if there is steric hindrance on this alkyl halide. So what will it do? Rather than attacking, I mean, acting as a nucleophile, attacking on this carbon atom, it will choose an easier way that will it will abstract a proton from here on this beta carbon, resulting in the formation of an alkene that is an elimination product. So yeah, the elimination is taking place here, this SN2, that is substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction is taking place, right? So there are two ways uh, we can use this alkoxide. It can act as a nucleophile or a base resulting on the, I mean, uh, depending on the uh, alkyl halide we are choosing. If this is tertiary, this one will act as a base, abstract a photon resulting in the formation of an alkene. If this one is primary, this will rather act as a nucleophile, attack on this carbon atom, kicking off this chlorine, resulting in the formation of an ether, right? Depending upon, so what is to be done here, right? So, yes. Done. Uh, so, in order for this to act as a nucleophile, we should choose this one to be primary alkyl halide. And this can be secondary or tertiary. In this case, I'm, uh, I'm using tertiary for the formation of an ether. Right? If you want the ether, the alkyl halide should be primary. And this one can be secondary, tertiary, or primary, depending upon the product. But it, uh, the alkyl halide should not be tertiary. Otherwise, it will not give this ether. Rather, it will give an alkene as an elimination product. Right? This is how uh, this is taking place here. Done. Now, 
Uh, so what are the characteristics of this reaction? Uh, let's see here. So I said this is an important laboratory technique for the preparation of both symmetrical and unsymmetrical ethers, right? Both of them can be prepared, but for dehydration of alcohols, only symmetrical ethers can be prepared. And yes, both um, ethers containing both secondary and tertiary can be prepared, right? Secondary or tertiary or primary, whatever can be prepared by this method, not only primary. And it's an ascent to attack of an alkoxide ion primary alkyl halide. Right, so better results are obtained, I said, if the alkyl halide is primary, right? In the case of tertiary and secondary, what is happening secondary or tertiary alkyl halides, elimination competes over substitution resulting in the formation of alkenes and no traces of ethers are obtained. I mean, discussed with the reasons also what is happening here, right? If, yeah. If I want the tertiary butyl ethyl ether, so are these the appropriate regions to be used? Yeah, this is an example. Yes. Yes. So I want what? Tertiary butyl ethyl ether. So this is tertiary butyl ethyl ether. Right? So are these are the reagents appropriate? No, these reagents are not appropriate. So what should I use? I use tertiary uh, alkyl halide here. This is one primary. If this is happening, uh, what is happening here? This will act as a base. Act as a base resulting in the formation of what? Alkene. So what are the reagents I should use now to in order to get this? So I just reverse them. ONA plus C2H5Cl said primary alkyl halides are the best to be used to obtain the ether. So these are the reagents. So now this will act as a nucleophile uh, resulting in the formation of what ethers? Right, this is not the appropriate reaction. Right, so what should be used here? Um, the primary alkyl halide and uh, the alkoxide ion should be tertiary here. Then we'll get appropriate uh, ether here. Right, if we are using this, so what are we getting here? So we'll get this one, alkene as a product here. Right, what are we getting? alkene okay that now so lastly how these i mean phenols can also be converted to ethers so the phenols first with sodium hydroxide resulting in the formation of what sodium phenoxide here now this sodium phenoxide uh, treating with alkyl halide uh, resulting in the formation of this ether. Simple. So this one act as a uh, nucleophile attack on this carbon atom resulting in the formation of what? Uh, ethers here. Right? Alkyl phenyl ether. Alkyl phenyl ether. Done. So these are the two ways by which the ethers can be prepared. One is by dehydration of alcohols and the second is by Williamson synthesis of ether. Right, and uh, classes, I mean, uh, trainings are also given from Isha Chem Academy and uh, the details of this have been given in the description box below. Uh, yes, and if you like my the, uh, video, please do like, share and subscribe my channel. And if you want any video to be discussed in particular, please share it in the comment section.